so and I don't know whether this is the the epilogue of the 2018 season or the prequel for the 2019 season but we are back on the Bowery at the hole oh my god look at this mob scene for what they're billing as a VIP preview a show about the alleged gallery. It's titled Then and Now. Stay tuned. Well, I think the full title of the show is Then and Now. Beautiful Losers. The alleged gallery on the Lower East Side in the 90s. Let's see if we can push our way in and get some views of some of the work. Oh geez, I haven't had to do this for a long time. They've got uh, a door person checking invitations. Hey, well, I was able to schmooze my way in here. Uh, one of the things that they're talking about is the, the product line of goods related to the beautiful losers. show is dealing with I guess the historical importance of the alleged gallery and I think that they were on Ludlow Street from 1991 to 2000 something like that and uh, although that was probably about Five or six years after the heyday of the East Village, there was still a lot of scrappy do-it-yourself galleries that were popping up here and there. We'll take a look around the uh, project space. Oh, it is hot in here. There's Chris Johansson. I like this guy. Oh, and there's his painting. One of his paintings. Now, I think the thing that attracted me to this show was the inclusion of a group of artists from San Francisco known as the Mission School. probably the basis for a lot of uh, the scenes that were involved in Beautiful Loser, the documentary that came out about 10 years ago. Hey, there's Clayton Patterson. Well, I just came back to the uh, receptionist desk looking for a guide that would tell us a little bit about uh, what we're looking at. And, uh, well, there aren't any of those available. 
available, so we just walk around. Okay, this is not going to be the optimum conditions to view art, but it could be good for people viewing. Here are some photographs, black and white. I guess this probably documents the original alleged gallery. Now, this was all happening in the early 90s, and uh, I kind of dropped out of the art scene for a while. I was raising a family and some other things. Well, viewers, I... Uh, went back home and looked at some of my footage and I, I realized that uh, as I said last night this is way too big of a uh, clusterfuck uh, mob scene uh, screaming crowd so I decided I was going to come back take a second look at some of this stuff and maybe we'll be able to actually see more than the back of people's heads. Well, I'm going to try to artfully splice some of the views from last night's opening into this less obstructed version. These are three pieces by Stephen Powers. And I would say that this piece is probably about... ...48 by 32, 36. These are enamel on aluminum. It's titled See Me Stagger. As you know, I'm a big fan of uh, the use of text in painting. Stephen does a pretty good job. And uh, I don't know whether this is shared by a lot of the beautiful losers, but uh, oh, this has a sense of uh, like sign painting. And I guess maybe some of these people could be looked upon as uh, forerunners of some of the current uh, street art scene. San Francisco, California, based in San Francisco. A revered figure in the West Coast graffiti subculture, 
Barry McGee makes drawings, paintings, and mixed media installations inspired by urban culture. McGee's boldly graphic, colorful work incorporates a multitude of influences, including, for example, American folk art and op art, but is most immediately evocative of the urban street culture from which he hails. His work critiques consumerist culture, rejecting the billboard and chain store. McGee in instead finds inspiration in the seeming randomness of graffiti, the endless uploading of images on the internet, and the creative styling of misfits. McGee's work succeeds in its sensitive balance between anarchy and collaboration, resulting in environments which immerse the viewer in his similar yet inclusive vision. Okay, it looks like they've got some tabletop vitrines with channel. Oh, that's a nice illuminated manuscript. This is my favorite piece. It's your favorite piece. I wish we could get in there and flip through the pages. I know, right? That's what I wanted to do too. You can actually see it all the spots. Somebody's got pretty good handwriting with their little sharpie. That's La Loca Drema. Barry McGee drawing. Hello, Aaron Rose. All of the enclosed slides are from the Arm & Hammer Museum in LA, except the last one of the guy pushing the cart. That one is from ICA in St. Louis. Templeton, Little Trouble Girl, acrylic and pastel on panels. Well, by uh, this was 1991 is when they're saying the alleged gallery started showing. I was already. Uh, cocooning in Brooklyn with a couple of babies and uh, East Village had pretty much faded from the scene at that point although I was still visiting galleries and uh, started writing some reviews around that time I think the first people that I became aware of were uh, Margaret Kilgallen and Barry McGee. And as I remember, they were they were talking about being influenced by hobo art and seeing as how I'd been kind of aware of uh, graffiti and some of the writers here in New York. The idea of uh, people picking up this kind of organic uh, subversive public art was always interesting. This is by David Aaron, Flex and Flow, Don't You Know? And Serious Achievement 2018, or acrylic on wood. This is actually three pieces here. So we've got uh, 
uh, constructed paintings, a lot of wood, and uh, an assemblage sculpture. It's like the uh, scraps from a carpenter shop. I don't know, but I would guess this is probably titled Night Moves, Broken Record, Double Vision. Acrylic spray paint and sign enamel on canvas. More of the, the sign painter's urgency. You know, I think also there's almost a, uh, a vernacular, a syntax of style and uh, approaches that the, the sign painters, the people being influenced by them have. I think one of them is a very uh, clear-cut, simplified forms, strong, flat, unarticulated colors. You know, this would be something like you would uh, see a sign in front of some kind of uh, highway feature. You know, Thousand Springs Motel. Mike Miles. This is more uh, conceptual. Set list from the last Germ Show, the Starwood Nightclub, Los Angeles, December 3rd, 1980. And I'm not going to read that. I like the. Uh, the use of the Bende dots. It makes me think of uh, some of Jenny Holzer's recent work. This is one of the more interesting kind of subtle pieces in the show. Jeff McFetridge. Everyone is first, everyone is last. 2018 acrylic on canvas. We've got our simplified forms, flat color. But I like the way that. Uh, Jeff has created a narrative out of almost amounts to a uh, abstract pattern of various analogous colors. Look at all the shades of the grays, the grades out blues. We've got our reds fading into terracottas and pinks, siennas. white photos by Tobin Yellen. Hippie Party Sacramento, 1990. <laughs> I think I was at that same party, except it was 1967. This is titled 
theft of fruit? Gonzalez. <laughs> when I take drugs, things get out of focus, and I like that. Yeah, he spells about as well as I do. This is mixed media. I would say it's probably about 32 by 84. spray paint and magic marker. Everything's got to be distorted or tw tweaked. Go in the uh, project gallery space. It's a selection of pieces by Tom Sachs. Okay, I was looking at this last night. I got a big laugh out of this. Looks like most of this has been uh, used for target practice. And, uh, okay, so he's got a shotgun he's been using. Black talons. Okay, that's all ammo talk. Tom Sachs, 1996. I seem to remember Tom getting in trouble. He was running around someplace in Europe, maybe Amsterdam, with uh, a gun. <laughs> Europeans don't like that stuff. I read a little bit from the wall label. A self proclaimed brocolier, Tom Sachs engages with high art, disposable consumer culture, and everything in between critiquing the speed and regularity with which a materialistic society replaces commodities, Sachs uses both a profusion of commercial icons in his work and builds his own functioning versions of consumer goods using repurposed items. Sachs' works are emphatically process-oriented, an expression of the artist's DIY spirit, divulging even the flaws of his complex and labor-intensive projects. An ongoing theme in Sachs' work is outer space, he said that NASA is the ultimate status symbol in technology, the highest technology. Okay. That's a uh, interesting sculpture. I wonder if this uh, functions if you start to move the hammer and the the anvil parts around. Todd James. Reclining spray can. 2011. Well, I guess this gallery ran from something like 1991 to 98, something like that, and probably most of this work is more recent. This is a uh, series of three photographs by Deanna Templeton, Tess, Aaron, and Andy. These are all gelatin silver prints, and the color is a C print. I like these photos. I've got the, uh, the classic nude but the nude is underwater, and uh, so you've got this trail of bubbles and uh, 
reflections and shadows and the waves. by Thomas Campbell. Hanging paper piece. This has got to be the biggest thing in the show and I would say that's probably about 16 feet tall. Uh, 10 feet wide. Spray paint and acrylic on panel. Had a couple of people come up and say they thought that this was was a three-dimensional thing sticking out of the wall and then they walked over and uh, were fooled. We've got a uh, little raised platform of ceramics. It's by Joanna Jackson. A jar for every artist in the show, 2018 glazed porcelain. say we've probably got uh, 20 I think we got the, uh, the off-white glaze it's a classic folk art color and uh, kind of a delft blue and uh, vermilion red a little black here and there that's a nice one These look like uh, something from the Hubble Space Telescope. Andre Razo, Songbird 2018 marker on paper. The first time we sang together. And the grass and the sea. Andre is uh, spending a lot of time making dots. Well, this is one of the reasons that I decided I had to come back. Uh, I didn't get a really good view of this piece last night. I'll splice in some scenes. I think I got Chris Johansson in front of this. And uh, these are actually two pieces Unique Minds and Souls Within Infinity, 2018, and Untitled. I was going to say, beyond Barry McGee and Margaret Kilgallen, I think that you would have to consider Chris Johansson also one of the most recognized of the mission school branch of the alleged gallery stable. You can go back in the com report files. I probably got at least a couple of his shows. And uh, gosh, I think he did a 
did a show at uh, Deitch Projects probably eight or ten years ago, and he was nice enough to come out and uh, do an interview with James Calm for two or three minutes and uh, talk a little bit about his projects. Uh, one of the things that I think is interesting about this recent couple of paintings is that uh, Chris always made it a point to paint on used wood or things that he'd found and uh, both of these are on uh, well, fairly large stretch canvases. I would say that this piece is uh, maybe seven by nine feet. And that's gotta be, oh, maybe 10 by eight feet. Those are pretty big paintings. Also, uh, I think Chris has got a great color sense and there's, uh, you know, some people just have a natural touch, a natural knack for smushing around paint and they don't make a lot of pretenses and uh, they don't have an overly sophisticated technical approach and yet somehow just uh, the way the work gets done, the way the hand is uh, manipulating the materials is a nice, uh, nice thing. Cheryl Dunn. Titled Twisters. Birds over a field. And the flood. Uh oh. MTV promos, visual mafia. Rita Ackerman. It's always hard to do video on video. <laughs> Susan Clanciolo. It's like a gown, it looks like it's uh, linen muslin. Wool thread. Okay, here is someone that needs no introduction. Shepherd Fairy. Part of his Andre the Giant series. I'm not a big Shepherd fan. These are stencil, stoke screen, and collage. James Calm. Coming to you from the hole where we're looking at then and now beautiful losers, the alleged gallery on the Lower East Side in the 1990s. You can like this, share, and subscribe. And leave your comments, criticisms, reviews, critiques below. And as we always do in our 14th year of the Calm Report, thank you, Kate. Oh, thank you. <laughs>